Uh, my name is Anouk Wiprecht and I am from the Netherlands. Um, it's a crazy country. We're very small. Uh, we built on artificial grounds and we're very good at that. Um, I'm here at the moment in LA, uh, also partly to uh, see how me and uh, Cross Campus can collaborate on something during the summer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with telling a little bit about my own work. So for the people who don't know me, of course, everybody knows me here. <coughs> um, but um, yeah, I'm going to tell eight minutes about my own work and I'm going to tell eight minutes about an exhibition that I did in the past, which is, um, yeah, which is combining fashion and technology and in which I could um, yeah, support a big group of engineers and fashion designers together. I could collide them together in order to, um, yeah, to explore with us what, what fashion and technology um, actually, um, what I said before, it's eight minutes and eight minutes is 16 and I'm already over my time, so I'm gonna start. That's me. Yeah, so basically what I'm doing um, and have been doing for quite a while, um, I started with fashion design and I got bored because um, I thought fashion design was about communication and expression. And um, as soon as I started with it, I found uh, that yeah, none of that textiles actually could do. Um, at that time I got interested in robotics and I started to combine microcontrollers and engineering with, uh, yeah, with the designs that I was making. So basically. I'm doing is I'm, um, I'm yeah with my work I'm demonstrating a lot of technologies um, that that can be uh, yeah bought off the shelf or sometimes I'm collaborating with uh, really awesome uh, technology companies to uh, to create. For example, this is the cocktail making robot dress. It's the Daredroid. It gives you a cocktail uh, as soon as you play a truth or of game <laughs> sorry a game of truth or dare with her. Another demonstration I did uh, last year at the Maker Fair, uh, I was in between uh, two giant Tesla curls, uh, each attracting half a million volts with a bent architect. So that was really, uh, that was really an, uh, a very pure uh, exploration of what you can do with uh, electronics. Here you can see um, yeah, plasma balls being engaged um, at that time. Uh, we blew them up afterwards, which was uh, the most fun of all. So, um, but what I'm actually really interested in, uh, except for playing with electronics and technology, is uh, the space that we have around our body. So uh, I'm defining here uh, the intimate space, so the space very close to you, the personal space. We all know the feeling if somebody's getting too close into your personal space. Uh, the social space, your friends, your family, uh, the people that you like to occupy yourself, and the public space, which is everybody around you that you haven't known yet or that you haven't been in contact yet. So this is a defi definition of, um, for, example, uh, for example, the proxemics that we all have around our body. This is coined by Edward T. Hall in the 60s uh, in his study on proxemics, uh, proxemics, so proximity. And that is also what my uh, sensors are based on. So the, the intimate space, the personal space, the social space, and the public space that we have around our bodies. To showcase a little bit um, how I use that uh, is, for example, this design. And I'm going very fast through them because um, uh, I want to get, uh, yeah, I want to get to talk about exhibition. This is the smoke dress. Um, it's a dress as soon as you step into the personal space, it starts to smoke. So it's a little bit, an, um, going too fast. It's, yeah, it actually does that, so it's, it's great. Um, we started out with dry eyes, it didn't really work out that well. Um, so now it's a, yeah, it's a full wireless system on the back. And uh, it's a little bit ideal, for example, an, um, an octopus, uh, yeah, poofing and um, a cloud of ink and, uh, and diving away. So it's a little bit about our emotions or shyness. Uh, this piece I worked out for Volkswagen. Um, it's uh, 3D printed. It's a collaboration with me and uh, Nicolo Casas in where we were yeah, trying to uh, see how we could reflect the, the grills of cars and how to embed that in the smoke that actually was projected out of the system uh, in order to create a really nice symbiotic uh, yeah, push out of the, of the smoke which was really cool. Um, we presented it at um, the 2012 um, automobile show in, uh, in Germany. So again, uh, getting back to these distances, it's a really interesting uh, yeah, way of approaching technology because we all wear our wearables on the body. Uh, wireless biosignals are really interesting. Uh, coupled to proxemics, then you actually get a chance to um, control your environment, your surroundings, and also your inner self. Recently, the, uh, the last nine months, I've been working with Intel in Hillsboro, in, uh, in Portland, in Oregon, which is less sunny. So I always uh, enjoy my little breaks to LA. Um, I'm working there uh, with uh, Intel Edison, which is their new um, microcontroller, I need to say, uh, module that, um, that I have been trying with our team 
to connect to, uh, to biosignals. So basically this uh, little um, overview of what I'm looking into at the moment. What I actually used was, um, was EEG, was heart rate, was uh, respiration, and, um, and uh, proxemics. So this is Synapse, for example. Um, it is based on, uh, on uh, yeah, capturing the wireless biosignals from the body um, with the EEG headset. We hacked a NeuroSky, which was really fun. And um, yeah, so it, it gets the signals from the, from the body, from the, from the brain, the brain activity. And it has, a little, um, it has a little camera in the front that is capturing everything what happens uh, yeah, in front of her as soon as her uh, focus level is up. So as soon as her focus level goes beyond 80%, um, it's um, all being recorded, like her bio signals, also what she sees in front of her, um, and also the proximity, so who she has around her, and everything is being sent to a web interface. Which makes it fun because here she was interacting with the spider bots. The system goes on at 80%, and uh, yeah, she and I also we can exactly see what spiked her attention. So that's, for example, a really interesting way of using uh, both proxemics to see what is going on in the environment, but also connecting it back to the body to uh, to see what the, how the body is actually reacting on that as well. Another playful exploration, which I started with uh, Daniel Schatzmeyer in, uh, in Vienna uh, a while ago, uh, two years ago, I updated for, for Intel. It's an, um, this is a prototype of the, um, of the dress. Um, it's, an, um, it's, a, it's cut out of plexiglass. And um, yeah, it's basically spider, li uh, spider limbs uh, projected on the, on the shoulder. It was a little bit the idea of your interface not only yeah, being an, um, a little bit a machine or a robot for you, but also your interface becoming a tool that actually helps you with certain, um, yeah, certain social situations or certain emotional situations that you have around you. For example, we all know the feeling of, um, again, what I referred to before, somebody invading your personal space. So what do you do? Um, mostly what I do is I take a step back and another one and another one, and I'm standing against the, against the wall. So what I actually want to say is like, hey, I'm sorry, person, you're too close in my personal space, but I would never. So that is this idea that this is um, this uh, machine or this monster is based on. Um, it's a robotic spider dress. So as soon as you step into the personal space, it's uh, actually attacking you. <laughs> so here you can. Um, I'm going fast through it, but here you can see. Um, yeah, here you can see uh, some of the the modeling, um, the printing here, the equipping. Um, again, the public space, uh, the, the space that, it, that my system is, um, uh, is measuring and is based on uh, Intel Edison. I'm going to show you a little movie. Super creepy. So this was the teaser. Uh, the design in this state, it's, uh, that was um, beginning of November last year. It only had two states of behavior. Uh, the design is programmed with uh, 12 states of behavior. So depending on the speed and um, how you walk up to the design, it uh, reacts in a different way. So it goes into a ninja or in, a, in an attack mode, or it's challenging you. So the legs go to the front and to the back as a token of like, hey, come closer. And I, uh, I stab my little uh, mechanic limbs in you. So yeah, I, I try to use technology, which is uh, um, yeah, a bunch of silicon and, and plastic and, uh, and gear and metal and all of that stuff. And I try to uh, yeah, give it a behavior, give it a um, uh, uh, yeah, notion that it can really feel or that it feels with you or that it can help you in a way. From that point on, um, what, I want to, uh, what I want to talk uh, to you about um, as well. The reason that, for example, Cross Campus um, is hosting these events like Mindshare, or that Mindshare is existing, or that we talk about things is uh, because we want to yeah, make a sense of our world. We want to have a discussion of where things are leading us. Uh, we're worried about our future. We're excited about our future and uh, all of these things. So we're in a time that we can discuss a lot, that we can make statements, and that's super, super cool. Um, Techno Central, I started in, uh, in 2012, I started a little riot in, um, in Vienna, in the um, museum's quartier. I invited um, artists, um, and um, yeah, I, um, I, got some, I got a bunch of really, really smart people together. And um, I created an, um, an exhibition with the museum's quartier in Vienna around, um, yeah, Techno Central, where fashion meets technology, it was called. And, um, 
Yeah, basically it was an artist in residency program of uh, of ten months. So we had studios at MQ. Uh, I could uh, yeah let let people. I could fly in some people to um, yeah to 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 meet with us and to have a residency place for a few months. I coupled engineers and fashion designers together, and um, at MQ we started to yeah build designs that um, that yeah that might be a part of this idea of yeah sort of uh, yeah fas fashioning the future. So this is the museum square here. It has an uh, yeah it's it's a, it's a big place. It's the um, eighth largest cultural area in the world, and uh, the artist residency program is run by Quartier 21. The space that I had was Freiraum in, in the museum quartier, and as we are working with uh, fashion designs, it's something that you want to be really close to, that you really want to create an intimacy with. So um, that was one of the, the yeah the problems that occurred. That it was a really big empty space that uh, needed to be dressed. Um, so that was the first step, making a little bit more intimacy for the design. So this, for example, the Rubel dress of Philips, it was a little bit more heightened because some, some designs want to be touched to interact with, other ones just want to be stared at, sort of. So um, yeah, so it was this notion of creating a little landscape for every of the, of the dresses or every of the designs. Some uh, designs needed to have, for example, to be in, an, uh, in a darker space. So we created a really big snake throughout the whole exhibition in which, um, in which the designs really could have a housing, really could have this place that they could be um, yeah, really doing the things that they, uh, that they needed to do, like giving light or interaction, uh, interacting in that way. So this uh, list of, uh, of all the artists. Um, we had 30 artists, uh, 31 um, artworks in together. Um, there were people from the Netherlands and from Austria that I combined together. So, yeah, uh, Austrian or uh, Dutch engineers and Austrian or Dutch uh, yeah, fashion designers. 31 uh, works featured in the exhibition. For example, this is the holy dress of uh, Melissa Coleman and Leonie Smelt. In um, where they were interested in uh, this notion of having a dress, and um, you place your hands on the interface, or actually um, in real life you would touch the dress, but we, we decided to make an interface for the exhibition. And um, by, by uh, yeah, touching the dress, making that connection, and telling a lie, the, um, the dress could, um, could indicate if you were actually lying, or if you were telling the truth. So you, could, you got a shock from this dress. Which, yeah, which I found, um, yeah, it's, it was a really darling of the exhibition. Also, because, yeah, the, the, the piece was interactive, so people really could feel the shock if they placed the hands on the interface. Another dress was by uh, Ricardo Nascimento and Django Steinbacher, um, who used uh, hair from Balmain, and they had a little interface. So as soon as you uh, took the, 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 um, the little brush and you started to brush the dress, the dress started to wiggle. Another one was by uh, local androids. They wanted to create a, sick, a second skin-like material, so they really, um, yeah, they really. It was the first time that they explored with dragon skin, and um, as soon as you touch this, uh, this design it started to blow up, uh, blow up, and it started to uh, the veins started to pulse, for example. Uh, Karina van Heck, she created a design um, that uh, was not part of my exhibition, but I invited the, the piece over, uh, in which uh, it records the body sounds, and you could uh, DJ with it, you could mix with it. So with a little indicator, so it was really, uh, really cute. And um, yeah, so um, these are a few of the, these are the few uh, of the of the pieces that uh, that I just uh, coined out. This is uh, um, Mac and Anya. So they also had an interface, so you could, uh, yeah, touch the, you could touch the um, uh, the fabric, and you could hear the poems that were um, uh, embroidered in the in the dress. So we had the Arts in Residence program, so we created um, at the MQ 11 new works in 10 months. This is, for example, Pauline van Dongen. She was uh, busy in her studio on the flip dot dress. Here you can see some of the work that has been done at, uh, at uh, MQ. A lot, of, uh, a lot of wiring. She presented it at, uh, at the end symposium. And a work of uh, Bokemir Doringer and uh, Rein Vollenga, uh, which experimented with uh, ferrofluid. It was supposed to uh, become a dress, but um, I guess uh, they, they liked the experimentation with, uh, with the fair fluid uh, too much, and they started. Yeah, they made. They ended up making a sculpture, a sensoric sculpture. So wherever you came um, uh, towards the towards the piece, it started to interact, and uh, the fair fluid, um, yeah, came up. And this is the last piece that I'm going to present as part of the performance series. This is Bart Hess, his liquefied uh, performance in where, where he, um, yeah, he he's interested in creating an. an um, a sort of an um, yeah a still life. The 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 performer was sitting in the in the yeah just on, on one place for actually for 20 minutes. Uh, the audience was just gazing, 
super quiet and I, I was as a curator there I was like uh, afraid that people could not stand there for like 20 minutes but it was silence it was just silence for 20 minutes and people just kept staring at this blueberry smelling um, uh, yeah slime dripping from this body and uh, we, we uh, or I decided to keep the stain for the whole duration of the exhibition um, like in the exhibition and uh, we, we that um, I put a card on there like the, the remains of, of the liquefied performance of Barthes because it was such yeah such an impressive thing um, yeah, so to come back to things, uh, to, to engage, to discuss, to ignite, uh, the main purpose of Technocentral was to show off cool developments, but also to raise discussion and ask questions. So a little bit like we do here at Mindshare as well. Um, this fits so well because we are curious creatures. We're super curious on yeah, just everything that happens around us, especially in LA. Um, yeah, fashion tech is not really there yet because yeah, except for Andrew here <laughs> in the audience. Hey, Andrew, love you. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have that maybe that much uh, yeah, around us. So yeah, uh, at, in a way, it's really happening. The brands are really interested in us, like in like making these things happening, sort of. But it doesn't go that fast, you know? So uh, um, yeah, what I always try to create is, is more riots regarding to that. Um, yeah, a lot of people would love to wear the things that spin our minds or use on-body sensors as part of their well-being, but um, yeah, some things still need to happen before it will fully bloom. So, um, but uh, yeah, this is the way how I try and I'm happy to not be alone in here because it can be a scary world. This is why I'm so excited that we get to showcase three kick-ass girls that are also battling the fields of fashion and technology with me. <laughs> actually, actually, you guys are awesome. <laughs> So, um, yeah, next up uh, is, um, is the legendary Susie Pakchayan. And um, I'm, I hope that she's not going to be too mad at me uh, if I call her the grandmother of fashion tech. <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I? Because Susie is one of the persons here on, in the audience um, that really foresaw this field to be valuable much, much earlier than all the brands and corporate industry dipped their skin into it. So, um, blessing to you. I gave her the stage. <laughs> 